guys, it's Ramzilla here. So today we're going to be talking about a movie called Cannibal Ferox. <laughs> Alright, now I saw this movie last week, but I it was very hard to review because, you know, uh, this movie came out a year after Cannibal Holocaust, and this movie literally has so many similarities to it. It's not even funny. Like, you, you almost feel like you're watching the same movie, except it's shittier. So, before we get into the similarities between Cannibal Ferox and Cannibal Holocaust, I'm going to let you know what Cannibal Ferox is about. So, Cannibal Ferox is about this girl who's about to graduate from college, and she's trying to do a paper on how cannibalism does not exist. So, her, her brother, and a friend go out to Colombia in a place called Paraguay, and, um, they were trying to find this village or river, I think, and then they end up coming across a cannibal tribe, and bad things happen to them, obviously. <laughs> That's why this movie is also called Make Them Die Slowly. So, anyways, I, this movie recently came out on Blu-ray, and since I have the Cannibal Holocaust Blu-ray, I was, uh, considering buying this one as well. Now, what happened here was that I was very interested by the title and, you know, the pictures that they were, uh, the um, company that's coming, well, that came out with it was releasing and stuff. I was very intrigued by them. I was like, well, this movie looks really cool. I was wrong. So wrong. Because, like I said, this movie is literally a shitty version of Cannibal Holocaust. The reason I say that is because... The Cannibal Holocaust can stand on its own for what it is. It's a cannibal movie, you know, it tries to uh, prove a point. It can stand on its own for what it is. Cannibal Ferox, on the other hand, it can't stand on its own. The reason for that is because since this movie came out a year later uh, from Cannibal Holocaust, it seems like the director was just like, okay, we'll take this, 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 and this from Cannibal Holocaust and make a shittier plot and see what we get. And this is what they came out with. Cannibal Ferox cannot stand on its own. And a great company like Grindhouse releasing, I don't see why they would take the time to come out with this movie. Because if they already came out with the Blu-ray for, for what I think is one of the greatest cannibal films, which is Cannibal Holocaust, why come out with Ferox when Ferox is just a shitty version of Holocaust? Now, if you have not seen Ferox, this is where I'm going to get into details on like the similarities between Cannibal Ferox and Cannibal Holocaust. So, if you have not seen um, Ferox, and you don't want to know what happens in the movie, or you don't want to know why I think they're similar or anything like that, feel free to skip ahead to see what I rate this movie. Or, if you don't plan on watching this movie and you've already seen Cannibal Holocaust, and you'll know what I'm talking about, feel free to stay. Okay, so, in Cannibal Holocaust, remember how there was a scene where... They were shooting out in, like, they were shooting, well, the beginning, the opening credits. They were shooting over the forest and the lakes and stuff. Cannibal Ferox has that as well. Now, if you guys remember in Cannibal Holocaust where you're introduced to the team of bad guys, remember that small little port and that, like, little strip in that poor little village? Cannibal Ferox was filmed in that same place. Literally. Now... In Cannibal Holocaust, you guys do remember that this movie was, well, it is infamous for uh, real-life animal killings. They killed a um, muskrat, a snake, a tarantula, a pig, and a turtle, a sea turtle. Cannibal Ferox kills real-life animals, too. They killed a uh, muskrat, uh, they killed a snake, a pig, an alligator, uh, I don't think they killed a monkey, though. Uh, there was a couple more animals that I forgot to mention, but they kill real life animals as well. <laughs> Alright. Now, remember in Cannibal Holocaust how they were filming the monkeys and the animals that were around and stuff? Cannibal Ferox films that as well. <laughs> they were filming the same monkeys. Well, I'm, I'm not saying the same monkeys from Cannibal Holocaust, I'm saying like the same species of monkeys. They filmed those and a cheetah and other stuff. Oh, man. <laughs> So many similarities as well. Alright. Moving on. 
You guys remember how uh, Cannibal Holocaust had that eerie, like, um, the electronic sound? It was like... I can't even imitate it because it was so unique, but you guys know which one I'm talking about, right? Cannibal Ferox tried to do that as well. well they try to have that, like, eerie, you know, suspenseful sound. <laughs> Oh, also, one more thing. You guys remember in Cannibal Holocaust how they beautifully, I mean, the editing on this movie was very well done, at least for me, how they put two stories into one movie. Like, the professor looking for the kids, and then the found footage part of the kids, you know, showing what they do, and then back to the professor. That was, for me, remarkably done. Cannibal Ferox tried to put two movies into one as well. A story about a kingpin looking for a drug dealer that owes him money. And uh, the police looking for that drug dealer who happens to run into the kids that are trying to prove that cannibalism does not exist. They tried to do that, but it just, I saw no point for that drug dealer story. Like, honestly, if we were just introduced to the sister, the brother, and the friend, and we had run into that drug dealer, that, that would have been fine. Like, okay, you know, he's a drug dealer. That's cool. There's no need to get into a backstory of the police looking for him or even his girlfriend looking for him that there, there was no need for that and kind of a holocaust it makes sense on why the professor is looking for them that all that makes sense and kind of a ferox it has nothing to do with anything so there was that uh what else there was castration scenes there was two actually that's one more than kind of a holocaust in Cannibal Holocaust, there was one castration scene at the end. In Cannibal Ferox, there was two. I guess that's about it. <laughs> a major difference, I guess. I mean, to be honest, it has, like I said, it jumped over a lot of the similarities that I thought were very interesting on why they couldn't, you know, make their own movie, make a stand on its own. Instead, they had to go out and copy off Cannibal Holocaust. So, in this case, um... The only real major difference is that Cannibal Ferox has a little bit more gore, like a couple more scenes of gore, than Cannibal Holocaust. Most of the gore in Cannibal Holocaust is towards the end, I guess you could say. Like, it has a couple scenes, like, here and there throughout the movie. But most of the movie in the beginning is, like, rape and sex and tits and whatnot. In Cannibal Ferox, it's more of, like, a couple, like, more gore scenes here and there, you know? So those are some of the similarities and differences. I can't even say some differences because there's only like one and that's the gore. Because like I said, uh, Cannibal Ferox can't stand on its own and it just copied a lot of Cannibal Holocaust and I, I didn't like that at all. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this movie a one out of 10 because of the fact that it tried, I guess, it tried. At least it gets a one for trying. But I didn't like it at all, so if you guys have already seen it, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you haven't seen it and plan on watching it, I would suggest you watch Cannibal Holocaust first and then this one and see what you guys think about it, see which one you think is better. And then come back and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I will have more reviews up, so subscribe to my channel. Once again, this is Ramzilla signing off.